Hi there and welcome, I'm Nikki Sutton. Thank you so much for joining me today, sending lots of love out to you. I hope you're doing really well indeed. Consciousness rising, guiding you through spiritual awakening and beyond. Now, this video is all about my book, Consciousness Rising, and I wanted to do a dedicated video on it. One, because I'm doing a giveaway, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, of signed copies of my book. And secondly, I'm just really pleased with Consciousness Rising. I put lots of work into it, and this book is not just about me or anything, it's for you guys. You see, when we go through the awakening process, it can be a really tough time for some and we can end up in a, a dark and low place because our reality, our concept, our beliefs about reality are breaking down and we're discovering an entirely new self. A lot of darker energies can purge from us at this time and we realise where lots of healing can be done. We realise many of our shadows and we awaken to spiritual aspects like psychic abilities, the law of attraction, synchronicities, and all of this can be just really brand new to us. And there's so much to learn and discover, and it all just sort of happens all at once during an acute awakening. So about my book giveaway, I'm giving away five free copies of Consciousness Rising, and I'm gonna sign them as well. So to enter this, what I'm asking for is to send me your most inspiring quote that you have created. And then I'll do a video sharing these five quotes and who they're by, and then maybe do a bit of a discussion on them as well. So the most inspiring quote that you can think of, or perhaps if you like, you can send me the most inspiring quote that you've seen, but remember to put who the author of the quote is okay so to enter this the link is in the description on YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast or watching on Instagram Facebook or Odyssey if you head to nikkisutton.com slash awakening and there'll be a form there where you can fill in your name your inspirational quote and also your email address and your email address isn't used for anything else just for this and I'll just choose five of the most inspirational quotes that have really moved me and then I'll send out your free copy, free signed copy of Consciousness Rising for you. And then I'll probably do, I think I'll do a video on these five quotes and just discussing a bit about them. Okay, so it's nikkisutton.com slash awakening to enter that to, well, win yourself a free copy of Consciousness Rising and I'll sign it for you as well. Consciousness Rising is really designed to help people through awakening onto an enjoyable, more peaceful, balanced spiritual path. So as well as this book helping people through awakening, it's also for those who have had an awakening in the past. I'm talking about when you first awaken to the spiritual nature of self and reality. I mean, we continue to awaken to new realizations, concepts and practices throughout our life. But oftentimes it's that initial first transformation, that metamorphosis where before we were perhaps an atheist or we were just very immersed in material physical life and then we discover perhaps through evidence and proof or through information or some kind of experience we discover the spiritual nature of reality. So this book is for those who as well as they're going through an awakening also for people who have been through one before and would like to see if their experiences match up with others and just, you know, gain a little bit of support and recognition for what they've been through. Also, if an ordinary general person was to pick up my book and have a read, it could cause an awakening in them as well. So Consciousness Rising is full of concepts and quotes and stories as well. So it's not just me telling you stuff. It's also people's experiences, people ge people's general experiences, and also a lot of my own experiences as well, ones that I haven't shared before. It's got quotes in it from other famous authors and very wise individuals as well, and lots of realizations too. 
So the first part of the book is really guiding people through the process. You might be immersed in your awakening, hence you found my YouTube channel or my Instagram or my podcast. You're in the middle of an awakening or it's just begun and you're looking for some answers, maybe some guidance and help through the process. So the first part of the book is all about that. Everything we go through are realizations and our experiences, for example, with family members and friends, you know, I'll go into that in just a moment. But the second half of the book is more to do with the concepts we awaken to and the practices we can settle into as we move onto our spiritual path. So as our awakening settles, what I've aimed to do is help people onto a level and steady spiritual path moving forwards. There's lots of practices and exercises in this book as well. I think because I've poured my heart and soul into it, and it, it is it is like a culmination of all of my work since 2014 when I began. So you may see on my YouTube channel, I've covered hundreds, literally hundreds of spiritual concepts and you know, told you about my own experiences and others as well. I've covered so many concepts and I feel like I've pulled them together in this book and really conveyed them in a way that's helpful for someone who is experiencing the awakening process or has done in the past. So I'll just go through a bit about what's in the book in terms of chapters, if you like. I've got a little bit I can read to you as well, if I can find the page. So this chapter is, is about what is awakening, essentially, and it's very hard to define. So I'll just read you a page here, if you don't mind. So awakening is beyond words, but in a nutshell. We could say that fundamentally spiritual awakening is waking up to the spiritual nature of self and reality after sleeping or being unaware of it. What the spiritual nature of self and reality might be, I'll go into shortly, but awakening also means transforming into a new state of beingness, a new version of or entirely new self. Maybe you can resonate with that. We experience an energetic shift as our consciousness realigns to a higher frequency or vibration. It's out with the old and in with the new, meaning darker energies are purged from the self, forced out by the light of awareness we're inviting in. Awakening is very much about that, isn't it? This purging and realigning can take us to dark places where our shadows reside and even haunt us. And this, if extreme, is called the dark night of the soul. See chapter three. So I did put, you know, a good reasonably large section in there about the dark night of the soul. You know, when we sink quite low and there's a lot of dark energies purging and our reality can really shift and we start to manifest thought form entities, some, some of us and have a lot of unpleasant emotions coming up and we need to work through this. I've also got tips on working through it as well. We can think of awakening as the start of our spiritual journey. It's the first time we open our eyes and begin exploring a new approach to life. Throughout our journey, we continue to awaken to new possibilities, knowledge and practices. It's like waking up in the morning. We're not waking up all day, just in the morning. But after that, we move through our day having experiences and learning about life, sometimes awakening to new possibilities. So after awakening begins, it never really ends. It tends to melt into a hopefully steady and level spiritual path stretching ahead, sometimes with bumps and rocky patches, other times with sunshine and roses. Perhaps the ultimate goal is enlightenment or a state of self-actualization described by Abraham Maslow as the desire for self-fulfillment, namely to the tendency for him to become actualized in what he is potentially. This tendency might be phrased as the desire to become more and more what one is, to become everything that one is capable of becoming. And that's very much key in awakening. It's the casting off of old 
beliefs and concepts. It's the casting off of the old materialistic you and emerging into something new and therefore opening up all those potentials of what we have the potential to become. Before that, perhaps we are limited and limiting our potentials because we're not so close to being our true self. Our true self is an immortal energetic being, infinite consciousness, soul consciousness. And when we ignore that fact, we're not so close to being our true self, I believe anyway. So in the book, I go through what are we awakening to and what are we awakening from? So what are we awakening to? I address concepts such as the law of attraction, psychic phenomena, the immortality of the soul, oneness. We awaken to meditations and we start transcending illusions and energies and the chakra system, kundalini and karma, there's past lives, reincarnation. I touch on many of these subjects and give a point of view perhaps that you haven't considered before. And in many of these chapters as well, there's experiences that others have had, for example, past life experiences too. So we awaken to a lot during awakening and everyone interprets what they, what they learn differently and weave it into their own concept of self and practices and what have you. So then I move on to the causes of spiritual awakening. You know, this is a whole video in itself, which I have done a video on actually before. So the causes might be a sudden traumatic event. That was what happened to me. And I give that story in the book as well. Ongoing difficult circumstances, such as an oppressive situation or being in a, in a job that, you know, where your consciousness can't express itself. Paranormal events, that's another trigger or cause of awakening. You know, gosh, there's been many paranormal events that have happened to me. So I was just thinking about some paranormal experiences that happened to me as a child when we used to live in this old house in the south of England. And I mentioned one of the stories in a video I did for Hay House recently. You might want to check that out. There'll be links on my social media very soon. Uh, but, you know, a couple, of more, a couple more things that happened to me there are as follows. When I was a kid, we lived in this kind of spooky house in the south of England and you know I always found this house spooky I mean after that when we moved I didn't really find it that spooky although it was spooky for a while my mum had to get rid of a, a spirit in that uh, new house we moved into that story's in the book as well but the previous house you know it was like extraordinarily spooky and when we find a house very spooky that's usually because our intuition is saying that you know there might be entities or beings around in that property and there were several occurrences there where things happened when I was very young and I found it really hard to make sense of it so in um my grandparents also lived with us in, in that house at the time. I remember being in my grandmother's bedroom, just sort of looking at her old hat. And um, there was a couple of wardrobes in there. And I know that they shut well. They had good mechanisms on them that allowed them to shut well. But sometimes when I would go in there, things would move and it, I would feel a presence and something would move. For example, I'd be walking towards the door to leave the room and the wardrobe would unlatch itself and just go and just swing open. And it was positioned in such a way that as it swung open, it would, as it swung open, it would actually block the door. And this happened a couple of times for me and I'd gone, I tested the wardrobe and saw it, you know, it shut quite well and you'd have to give it a good pull to, to undo it, to open it. So sometimes that would happen that the wardrobe doors would swing open, blocking my exit from that room. And, you know, as a kid, I asked others about it and did they, did the cupboard open on its, did the wardrobe open on its own for them? And they were like, no, and they didn't know what I was talking about. There was other things that used to happen in that house. I know my mum always said she used to see shadow people in that house. So that's, uh, like, well, you could say ghosts or spirits, but 
because they're very dark looking, shadowy looking, that represents a being that tends to suck energy from reality. That's why they're darker in appearance. They're, it's almost like kind of like a black hole, you know, energy will go into it. So it's beings that are not of the light, they're darker, but probably not by intention. I'm not saying demonic, but just humans that have passed away that haven't gone to the light and they're hanging around you know not feeling good they don't want to leave the place perhaps they've got an attachment to the property or they feel like they've got unfinished business anyway I'm going off at a tangent but my mum used to see shadow people sometimes in that house I remember once she said she was standing on the landing talking to my grandmother and she heard someone walk up the stairs well they both did and turned around because she thought it was my dad but there was no one there and then she felt someone walk through her. Yep. So what I'm getting at here is these paranormal experiences, they didn't cause my awakening, you know, I was just little, but they probably compounded my eventual awakening and caused me to search and seek for spiritual wisdom to help make sense of life when I was going through my traumatic event. But it's those kinds of strange experiences or even more profound than that even that can start to, you know, chip away at our concept of material reality, sort of causing us to wonder if there's something more metaphysical going on. So a paranormal event can cause a spiritual awakening. Also, information can cause spiritual awakening. Perhaps someone told you something of a spiritual nature that that awakened you. Also, meditation can cause a spiritual awakening as well through a profound meditative experience. Perhaps, perhaps experiencing psychic expansion during meditation. And you see, these causes of awakening, what I'm saying now, Perhaps there's one that caused your awakening as well. So also another trigger for awakening is psychedelics. And, you know, I go into that in the book too, where we can have experiences that are, are seem very real and far out and completely immersive and very spiritual in nature. So that can cause an awakening too. So also in the book, I address the stages of spiritual awakening. And you know, this video is getting quite long, so I won't go into all of them, but I class the stages of awakening as the deconstruction stages and the reconstruction stages. And within those, there are you know many stages of awakening. And some people experience all the stages, some people only some of them. But the deconstruction stages is where our sense of self and our ego really breaks down, our concept concept of reality really breaks down. So we might experience the shock stage. That's, you know, the very beginning when, you know, it's all just a shock. And I remember that I was walking around in a bit of a daze after my traumatic event and starting to find spiritual wisdom. It was, it was blowing my mind to pieces. And, you know, I felt very anxious during that time because what I thought reality was made of, you know, in chemistry, I learned about atoms and that they're sort of made of energy, but you don't tend to look much further than that. You know, the fact that reality is comprised of energy really made a difference to me. And, and realizing that and, and the continuance of life and that, you know, many of the things that happened to me in the past, the paranormal events, you know, I stopped and actually looked at them and thought, wow, that's actually a lot of evidence for, for the metaphysical. You know, I was in quite a, a shock because my concept of reality was really changing. And then also during the deconstruction stages, we can end up searching and seeking for information, you know, for many hours at a time, being immersed in it, sometimes quite obsessively for some, because we're trying to figure out our reality again. We're trying to figure out how the world is in a metaphysical way, now that we're figuring out it's different to the physical and material. And when our ego breaks down, you know, that's, that's, 
who we are in this human lifetime as a human being and it has certain beliefs there's a basis for our ego existing it's based on beliefs and assumptions and many of those beliefs and assumptions are breaking down and we're we're opening up to higher energies of our true self which is a mixture of who we are in various lifetimes who we are in this lifetime and also higher aspects of ourself it's a lot to go into in this video but we also experience you know loneliness which is also known as the hermit phase and also the dark night of the soul as i mentioned and then you know we start to move into the reconstruction phases where we begin to rebuild our sense of self anew and we perhaps notice more phenomena we start to open up you know once we begin to believe and are open to these things they tend to happen more and more so we tend to experience more synchronicities perhaps more psychic phenomena or we we're paying attention to them now and sensing energies and perhaps realizing the extent to which various forms of energy do affect us we might start seeking healing we might start a meditation practice performing inner work as well and we begin settling into our spiritual path and looking for perhaps new roles in life what 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 is our role now sometimes we can feel like what we have been doing doesn't quite suit who, who we're becoming you see and then I also move on to as well facing family and friends and this is a big a big deal for many because they feel rejected by their family and friends one of my family members was particularly worried about me because all of you know the spiritual concepts I was trying to tell her about because that's often what happens at the beginning of awakening we start trying to tell others about our realizations it was really outside of her frame of reference so she was really concerned for me and then you, you know I felt rejected by family and friends and you know there's in the book there's lots about that and how to help yourself through it and, and some ideas and concepts to help you to feel better as well um, and experiences of others so that you know that you're not alone in this so then just a bit on from the halfway mark in the book I start to provide uh, guidance on moving beyond awakening just to sort of set you a sail onto your spiritual path with some really intriguing concepts and it's these concepts that I mentioned in the book that really helped and inspired me moving forward so I've got a whole chapter on psychic development and on the clairs as well because I feel like these are really important for our spiritual evolution our psychic senses I also go into third eye development as well and in addition to that kundalini and energy sensitivity and protection as well psychic protection various methods too which is very important I also provide uh, some self hypnosis for past life regression and soul retrieval as well for healing because this is very much my expertise my practice is past life regression and hypnosis and as well as past life regression I've moved very much into the healing aspect providing hypnosis for soul retrieval and cutting the cords as well which I provide sessions in so I've had a lot of experience in hypnosis and I provide self hypnosis as well on my guided meditation channel uh, guided meditations with Nikki Sutton so I've really been able to provide lots of practices for you as well as meditation self-hypnosis and journaling exercises too so there's parts on helping you to remember your past life and to manifest your best life and this is really important because we do create our reality moving forward and I've got my own techniques and tips on manifesting too I think one big point about manifesting is that oftentimes we try too hard with it and in that intensive trying we're putting up a lot of resistance a lot of resistance to failure there, you can feel sort of an energetic stuckness when you're trying to manifest too hard we pin our hopes 
too much, our happiness too much on the outcome. And in that way, we are generating resistance to failure. And a big part of manifesting, I believe, is just letting go and being okay with whatever happens. I know that sounds sort of counterintuitive in a way, but in being okay with whatever happens, we're releasing all resistance, our vibration is rising and then creation can bring us all the best. But I do go into this in consciousness rising details on my own recommendations for manifesting. So then I've got a part in the book about inner work to raise your vibration, healing limiting beliefs, real specifics and some hypnosis some processes to work through for inner work and uh, that's when the soul retrieval comes in too. I also address pitfalls of spiritual awakening for example. One pitfall is that I always observe is that spiritual individuals often feel like they have to look really happy, they have to look like they're fully healed, centered and balanced. It's, it's like a veneer of positivity and this is very much a repression of inner work that needs to be done, repression of traumas within the subconscious and, and you know, putting on a face for others that seeing as they're on the spiritual path, they must be there now, you know, they're fully healed, doing amazing. But when we fail to listen to our emotions in order to heal them, just in manageable doses, when it feels safe to do so, listen to our emotions and perform inner work. When we fail to do that, you know, we're just stuck in one place. And there, there really is nothing to gain by trying to prove to others that you're ultra balanced and perfection now that you're on the spiritual path. I think others appreciate your authenticity more but there's other pitfalls of awakening too in there also. So I give lots of various concepts in addition to that, such as the masculine and the feminine energies and polarity. Also, that voyage of learning and discovery on finding our true self and our purpose. That's if you seek a purpose, not everyone does, but there's lots of tips in there on how to find your purpose. And I know that with my purpose, it was very much to do with following my excitement and my joy, even though at times it felt like the wrong thing to do or a silly thing to do due to others' judgment, but I followed my heart and my excitement. And that has really been beneficial for me because I'm really happy that I did that. So that's been an introduction to my book, Consciousness Rising, guiding you through spiritual awakening and beyond. It's been rather tricky to, you know, round up the book in one video because it, it does have a lot of great stuff in there that I've tailored and created for you, for those on the spiritual path, for those going through spiritual awakening. And remember to head to nikkisutton.com slash awakening and send me your best inspirational quote, either created by you or by others. And remember to write in there who the quote is from. And then I'll be back in touch with the five winners of that and requesting your address so I can just confidentially post out the signed copy to you. I hope that sounds like a good idea. I thought it would be nice to give some copies away. Okay, so Consciousness Rising is available in all prominent bookstores now if you want to get yourself a copy right away anyway. And I'm just so grateful for you guys, for my viewers. It does seem surreal to me that you guys uh, enjoy my work and I get so much positive feedback from you and it is overwhelming uh, sometimes. It does feel surreal that I've been able to help and inspire others and I, I feel honoured and blessed to have done that. Um, it, it really means a lot to me, you guys. <laughs> you really do. I just want to make that obvious and, and clear that you mean a lot to me. <laughs> okay. So, thank you so much for listening. I'm wishing you much love and all the best.